But the point is, if you're supporting conventional agriculture, it's hypothetically part of the problem. But what we also have to consider is in that environmental aspect, you know, for, for probably about a year, I've always tried to make the argument that, yes, you know, having no one's going to complain about deer sitting in the woods because if you have animals in a natural ecosystem, it is going to be carbon neutral. And if you have, you know, and, and, I, and there's plenty of land to, to do this to, to feed America, uh, that's available. The, you know, people say there's not enough land, there's too many people. That's not true. Absolutely not true. And, and saying that is just discouraging people from moving towards a better food system. I think that's ridiculous. But what I discovered in the past few weeks and what would probably put me into the loony bin is that the idea of carbon emissions is questionable because when you look at CO2 emissions, people argue, oh, agriculture is 9% of CO2 emissions, beef is 3%, da, da, da. But CO2 emissions are about 4% of greenhouse gases in general. You have water vapor. Right. So- uh, and, and the IPCC not really disclosing this to the public. And for the, from the data I've looked at over the past two weeks, I've been let, I'm led to believe that our impact on the climate is insignificant from a temperature standpoint. What I think is an issue is the pollution and the damaging of the topsoil. I don't think carbon emissions are what we should be looking at. I think that we should be looking at what the hell are we dumping into the ocean? How are we destroying soil? How are we you know, polluting the environment? I mean, have you spoken about the grand solar minimum before and sun cycles and global temperature variance. Yeah, I think it's a, I was actually looking into this recently as well. There was a Chinese study sh suggesting that there's this five, there's like 11 year solar cycle of solar minimums every 11 years and they're hypothesizing and, and that's well understood. So there is some temperature variance on 11 year cycle with sunspots and increasing and decreasing on the sun. That's well validated. And I think the hypothesis is, is there a 500 year cycle, which I, I don't know if that's what you're referring to as a grand solar cycle, but, um, I, again, this is a little bit outside my uh, knowledge area, but I think it's an interesting question. I, I, I'd love to get your thoughts on it. There is an 11 year sun cycle of, I, I, I would not say cooling and warming. That doesn't make sense. It's, uh, it's solar activity. Okay. And I don't listen, I'm in the same boat as you. I might understand this a little bit more, but I'm still like, I'm still swinging it a 95 mile per hour fastball that I can't hit. <laughs> so th this solar activity makes climate more and less volatile. The solar minimum versus the solar maximum is that period in the cycle where there's more and less solar activity. A grand solar minimum means that, you know, over the, like minimums aren't always at a certain minimum. They can be lower and they can be higher. So a grand solar minimum is supposed to be more severe than other minimums. In every single past minimum in history, there have been mass famines, mass deaths, food shortages because in the solar in the grand solar minimum it becomes difficult to grow food because growing seasons change temperature changes you have floods you have a very volatile climate you have more uh, I'm not sure if you have more volcanic activity but you certainly have more storms more floods uh, j just more changes and a more dramatic climate event in general the earth if anything is cooling and they've actually covered up data you know, from the early 1900s of really high level, like really high temperatures. Um, I think I spoke about this in a video I did last week where, you know, there were like thousands and thousands of deaths uh, just in cities in the early 1900s because of like certain types of heat waves. So, you know, there have been periods of time where CO2 has been much lower and the temperature has been much warmer. Uh, I think there are problems Definite, definite problems related to CO2 that is not necessarily pertaining to global warming. You know, I think those pollution issues, you know, how we're growing our food, how that's leading to the health of the, you know, everyone on this planet. But to say that climate change is an issue is a very, I think that's a very, I think it's very questionable. I haven't seen proof because if you actually try to find, you know, what is global warming, what is climate change? It's really just the IPCC telling you what CO2 emissions are and that the Earth is warming, but there's absolutely no proof that the Earth is warming. Well, I think in relative the last five years, you have like highest uh, temperatures on record in the last five years. I think if we look at a 500 year cycle, I, I think I think maybe the question is, is this 
uh, blip of the last five, 10 years? Or are we looking at like a systematic 500 year time scan? I think that's where it's, I think some of the doubts are being raised, but wouldn't it be safer to be conservative here and say like, okay, we're for, we're for sure releasing a lot of stored up CO2 from fossil fuels and all that stuff. Should we not just be safe here and think of some policies to perhaps reduce some of that emission, even though, and I, and I think you're absolutely right on that CO2 contributes around you know, sub 10% of overall greenhouse gases and where water vapor, which is something that we don't really control, at least humans don't control that much, is the dominant greenhouse gas. Again, I, like, I'm not an expert in this area, so I don't want to speak out of turn here, but like I, I would say like is the conventional wisdom of saying, hey, uh, even if it is a sub fraction, it's if we believe that this is an escape runway that we can't really reverse. Should we not just have this conversation be thoughtful about it? Uh, one, I don't believe what anyone tells me anymore. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who to believe. I don't know. I mean, I know I'm not going to trust the IPCC uh, and, and then this whole the new climate information that I've been exposed to. All right. Let's say everything is true. Let's say CO2 is the worst shit in the world. The impact that going vegan or changing your diet has on the environment is so insignificant in comparison to not driving your car, in comparison to not taking a flight to go on vacation. Agreed. And that and that pales in comparison to having a child, which pales in comparison to the amount of CO2. It, it, my point is what a person does in their day-to-day -day life, should, they should not be worrying about CO2 emissions. But uh, I think a big part of it is them wanting to control us and enact more like globalist government uh things such as, you know, controlling the meat, controlling the food, controlling everything. It's it's a pretty it's pretty easy to see what the general message is that's going on and but what they're telling us to do in order to achieve that message isn't conducive to achieving it. I'll agree with you there. I think if you look at the math in terms of the impact of going vegan, I mean it's like two percent where if you just yeah, I think the best thing you could do is like just literally don't take planes, don't import cheap stuff from China, don't like do everything locally, make your own clothes and like go off the rate, go off the grid basically is the best thing you could possibly do. But no one's, no one's saying we're going to slow economic growth. Like no one's saying, Hey, Africa, Asia, don't industrialize and, and, and build up your economy. Everyone's, and I think the argument is yes, like go be vegan. It's like, that's not really solving the problem. Even though I don't have a complete understanding of it, although it's, I'm, I'm pretty, I think I'm pretty much there. Uh, the solution to me, I don't think it is is conducive to what's truly good for the planet, what's truly good for the environment. Uh, so, I mean, if I want to sit down and try to understand the mechanisms and explain that to people, I feel like I'm just wasting my time. I'm just I'm just kind of at the point where I'm, I'm going to sit back and see how things pan out because I'm, <laughs> I'm genuinely curious. I'm genuinely curious. Look, I, I think I'm sympathetic to your worldview here. I think it's just hard to trust institutions. I think you just see the chips in every. 